Hello, hello. Welcome to the first episode of A Novel Console. My name is Chris. I am your host, and with me is my beautiful co-host and fiancé, Keridan. Hello. And today we have a great show for you guys. Uh, this weekend we were up in Georgia. We were at one of Keridan's friend's wedding, and we had a lot of fun. We also got a couple of stories from the whole trip. So, uh, first off, uh, we have... Something completely not wedding related that we want to talk about. And that is squirrels. <laughs> Evil little creatures. Are they? They are. How come? <laughs> because apparently people like to do very inappropriate things with them and they're just rabid. <laughs> now, are you talking about the puppet? Because the puppet does seem pretty evil. The puppet is one of the evil things, yes. So the puppet that we're talking about is these five little pieces of plastic that you put in each one of your fingers, uh, which turn your hand into a squirrel. A demon squirrel. A de it's, it's really, really cool. You have puppet fingers, well, squirrel fingers with paws and claws and teeth and eyes and everything. And the rest of your hand ends up being the tail. Now, there's one that cared and really really like that is <laughs> very inappropriate um and i i don't even know where to start with that it's a squirrel dildo and massager <laughs> it literally sucks on you <laughs> <laughs> it, it literally does suck on you it, it has this port <laughs> there's no mouth. better way to put it <laughs> on its mouth that you can use it to stick to yourself and the the tail part it, it's it's pretty gnarly you want to say what the tail part is the, the tail is the actual dildo device <laughs> so yeah so curves and everything so yeah but apart from demonizing squirrels the ways that we have by turning them into these horrible contraptions um, Keridan kind of has a little bit of a squirrel story uh, regarding our dog. Had some very unique squirrel experiences. We have an alarming amount of squirrels near our apartment. And one day, our poor dog, Luna, she just needed to go out. Chris was on his way out for work. And <laughs> there is literally an army of rabid squirrels jumping from roof to roof in our apartment complex. I mean, hundreds of squirrels. I shit you not. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing we have ever seen. They were in formation and Luna was fascinated. So it, it was like when you're at the beach and you see a wave, you know, a wave just coming and closing in on itself. It was kind of like that, but squirrels. <laughs> and uh, Luna just kept losing her shit. Uh, she kept trying to come out all day just to see the squirrels, just oh, to cha day. chase them, which I, I don't even know what she would do with a squirrel. She's such a tiny little idiot that, uh, what would she even do with a squirrel? I honestly think she just wants to get close enough to possibly even mother it like she tries to with kittens. <laughs> she's, she's also very, very kitten obsessed. Now, the reason why we're bringing up squirrels and how we're going to tie it together with the wedding that we were at this weekend is because of Keridan's friend that got married this weekend. I have so many weird squirrel experiences. My my friend who got married this weekend is deathly afraid of squirrels. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that is that is just plain hilarious. We're, we're pretty big nerds, and we do lots of nerd things together. And one of those nerd things, you know, before COVID took it away, was going to conventions. Um, the very first time we went to one, we went to Dragon Con. That's in Atlanta. And there were so many girls cosplaying as Squirrel Girl. It was a problem because Hunter wanted to run and hide. <laughs> Literally every time she saw one of these Squirrel Girl cosplays, it was it was a problem. <laughs> now, uh, just a little bit about Squirrel Girl for those of you who don't know. Squirrel Girl is this kind of like a joke superhero from Marvel. And uh, she's beaten a lot of Marvel supervillains. Uh, she's beaten Thanos. 
Oh. Yeah, she's beaten really? Galactus, the planet eater. Hmm. And she's also beaten Fing Fang Foom, which is this giant mystical dragon. And What now? And she's beaten the... Fing Fang Foom? Fing Fang Foom. Hmm. I don't know that much about the Marvel Universe unless I've seen it in, a, it's in a Disney just, movie. <laughs> it's just this college girl who has a pet squirrel and a giant bushy squirrel tail. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess if if you are terrified of squirrels, uh, that would be... Like the ultra terror. Yeah, just a giant humanoid squirrel chasing you, trying to get your nuts. Capable of beating Thanos, I'd be pretty scared. Yeah. Yeah, even though she's a joke character, she's she's pretty out there. Now, uh, the the wedding was fun. It was It was a great wedding. We had a lot of fun. We We enjoyed it a lot. There were some kind of weird jazz renditions of a couple of famous rock songs. The one that stood out to me the most was uh, Radiohead's Creep. I love that song. Hearing it in jazz was a bit odd, but whatever. Um, they also played, uh, which which one were, were the other ones? I know there was Nothing Else that. Matters. Yeah, by Metallica. Don't Stop Me Now. Yes, uh, which that one annoying guy wouldn't shut up about. We won't talk about him. That's fine. He was the only bad part. Yeah, he, he was he was pretty horrible. <laughs> and uh, we, we met a pastor. And his name was Jack. And Pastor Jack was pretty, pretty cool. He was wonderful. You want to tell us a little bit more about Pastor Jack? Yeah, so Chris was worried about being the only, for lack of a better way to put it, non-white person in attendance. I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> And this wedding was in Georgia. I'm originally from South Georgia, so his his experience with Georgia has only been the southern half of the state. Uh, so long story short, he was he was afraid he was going to be the only non-white person. And we wound up sitting uh, the rehearsal dinner with Pastor Jack and his wife. Pastor Jack is white. His wife is not. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty cool that we got to sit with the only other interracial couple there and... I had to smack Chris a couple times for cussing in front of the pastor. Yeah. Little did we know. I did not cuss. Um, <laughs> but basically, Karen's friend just came up to us. She was talking about all the video games that she liked, and she liked stuff like Dota and... World of Warcraft. Yeah, and I said, those are some really nerd-ass games. And I said, nerd-ass, and Pastor Jack was sitting just right there with his wife. <laughs> not caring at all yeah, they, they were just enjoying their food you know just enjoying the music and everything and uh we got to talking with pastor jack and his wife and we got to know them a little better and uh this is the second and th no third and fourth person that we know of personally that has had covid yes Thankfully, it had been more than a month since they had it, so yeah, some we're the, okay. Some of the symptoms that they told us they had were just horrifying. Insane. I mean, talking about their lips cracking and peeling and nothing helping it. Um, Pastor Jack said that his feet peeled like crazy. He was in the hospital for nine days. He couldn't move out of his bed. It was awful. Yeah, and his wife said that she would look in the mirror and she didn't look like herself. She was saying that uh, was her, her tear ducts, tear ducts. Uh, were shifted and her lips were cracked. And the only thing that would help was the silicone-based uh, moisturizer, which just makes you think, where the hell did this thing come from? <laughs> it's insane. Fuck, that shit is scary. But about, apart from that... Uh, so yeah, we, we got to talking and, and uh I feel like we became like best friends with this couple by the end of the night. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, like, it got to the point where Pastor Jack's talking about how he used to smoke weed and go on uh uh a low country boil or broil. broil. I never know exactly if it's boil or broil. Tell so, me. <laughs> so basically it's it's just uh what was it? He would go down, get the lures out full of Tybee Island. Yeah, full of uh shrimp. And Lobster and whatever blue, else blue goes in a crab. low country boil broil. And he would throw it in a pot with sausages and seasoning and whatnot. And he would get so high and start eating that. And he would just say that it would just be the most delicious food ever. And 
pretty sure anything would be delicious yeah, at that I mean, point. Even a bag of lace is delicious at that mm-hmm. point. They're the most blandest chips. Um, but yeah, no, they, they were great. Um, the next day, unfortunately, uh, we had talked about the day before we were going to trade numbers so that next time we were in the area, we could meet up with them. Um, unfortunately, we, we weren't able to, but, you know, it's what it is. We had a great time. I'm sure they had a great time. The ceremony was great. The whole thing was it was it was just great it was a, a great weekend oh and, and another highlight from the weekend uh when we left the area we were at and we got to Keridan's dad's house which we were going to spend the night there he told Keridan go outside and look in the fridge they have a cabana with an extra refrigerator they don't just keep their refrigerator outside <laughs> we're somewhat civilized in south georgia <laughs> Can you imagine? I want a drink. Yeah, you're going to have to go next to the outhouse and get a drink. <laughs> but he carried and opened the, the fridge, and they had cakes for us. They had our favorite cake. Yes. So there is this random restaurant in Tifton, Georgia. It's right off of I-75 if you're ever driving through. I recommend that you stop, if for nothing else, for the dessert. <laughs> it is called Pit Stop, Pit, Pit Stop. Yeah. Barbecue. Um, And there is a local woman who sells her cakes in this pit stop. And oh my God, they are the most heavenly things you will ever taste in your life. I mean, and it's like layered cakes. They have like a bunch of little thin layers. Um, Not as thin as a crepe cake would be. But they have this amazing cream cheese frosting in between. Oh! And the strawberry one is so much better than the key lime. The key lime one takes the cake. See what I did there? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll give it to you. It's so much better. But honestly, we would appreciate it if you guys would help us decide if key lime is worse than strawberry and strawberry yeah. reigns supreme. No. I know there's some chocolate people out there, but we're just keep it, keeping it to fruits <laughs> right now. We love our fruity cakes. <laughs> yeah, I'll stick with strawberry anything. Key lime, anything and everything, always. I should have been a Florida girl. Mm. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what, what happens in the next life. Um, but yeah, but we had a great weekend. Cake was definitely the highlight. Um, squirrels are scary. And uh, that's about it for what's been going on with us uh, lately. So you want to go ahead and jump into our first topic? Sure. It's time... For book This week's book is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. It was uh, published on September 3rd, 2019, so almost a year ago, although I guess it will be a year ago by the time this is uploaded, this episode. (laughs) Um, But it's published by Berkeley. It is going to be a series. The the title of the series itself is going to be A League of Extraordinary Women. The second book does publish on September 1st, 2020, so it will likely be in a bookstore near you by the time you're listening to this episode. Um, I loved this book so much follows the heroine, Annabelle Archer. She's one of the first women to attend Oxford University. It's set in um, 1879 England. So as part of her admission to Oxford, she's supporting the rising women's suffrage movement. All girls in this are charged with finding and bringing men of influence to the cause. Why are you laughing at me? (laughs) So the reason I'm laughing is because usually you read... um young adult fantasy books you're throwing me off my groove i'm throwing myself off my own groove and uh her name is annabelle archer so like i I, you said the name and i was expecting like some lady running through the woods with a bow and arrow oh my goodness you're picturing like katniss everdeen basically Uh, more like uh arwen everdeen Arwen does literally nothing in those movies except love. She You're saved... thinking of Tauriel, who was no, literally created saved... by Peter Jackson. She saved Frodo. Okay, that's the only thing she did. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the movie, she's just lounging on her couch, 
trying not to die. <laughs> okay, but going back, uh, so bringing men of influence to support the cause. Yes, women's suffrage. Yay, we want to vote. <laughs> okay, and it's in Oxford, England. England, yeah. She's going to Oxford. <laughs> All right. So, uh, anything that you want to bring to light uh, that stands out to you? Because I, I got a couple of questions that stand out to me about this. So, I think probably the thing that stood out to me the most is this is one of the first historical fiction, uh, not historical fiction, historical romance very different from historical fiction, uh, very first uh, historical romances that I've read. Um, and I liked how it's literally like living out all of my Jane Austen fantasies. There was sexual tension. I wanted to see it come to fruition. You don't get that because it would have been very inappropriate for Jane Austen to be horny. Yes, exactly. It was already inappropriate that she was deigning to write books bless her heart but <laughs> so it was like jane austen but with dick with dick damn yes. uh, so so tell me about some other books in the genre because i know this is kind of a new genre to you but you said that you were thinking about exploring it more uh when we weren't recording so the most popular one that everyone would probably know is outlander it is technically historical romance. Um, so whether you're interested in the show or the book or both. This is not the one where they decapitate people. Yes, they do decapitate people. Oh, really? Do they get the power of the person after they decapitate it? Uh, I don't know about that. So it's not Highlander? No. There's a very big difference between Highlander and Outlander. <laughs> the only magical element there really is in Outlander is that... This woman magically winds up in the past by walking through some Stonehenge like saw rocks. An ad for it. Yes. We were watching uh, Hulu the other day. Yes, and I told you I wanted to watch it, but that I would need you to tell me when I could look away and look back because I can't handle the gore. There's gore. There's gore. I have heard from a certain source that it is worse than Game of Thrones or the same level as Game of Thrones. Interesting. I have very low gore ten, um, tolerance. <laughs> now, you said this is historical... Romance. Romance, so it's not fiction. It is fiction, but it is... In the genre of historical romance, rather than fiction, mainly because of the dick. So Frankenstein wouldn't fit in there. Do they talk about Frankenstein's dick? <laughs> 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 and where he puts it. <laughs> you knew where I was going with this. So, <laughs> a little bit of a background on this stupid joke. Uh, the, we recorded this episode already, and when we were on our drive down, I was like, fuck, I really fucked up. I missed a lot of shit that I wanted to talk about. We both fucked up. This is my first time doing this, and I have no idea what I'm doing. I was like, there was this one really good part that I really want to keep, and it's Frankenstein's dick. Yes. And the joke was, uh, Frankenstein is made out of different parts of dead people. And uh, imagine if Dr. Frankenstein would have thought, hmm, maybe eventually I'll create a wife. Uh, and maybe I should put, like, different pieces of penis, making a really long one onto him, and tattoo a number on each section of penis. Like, one inch, two inch, three inch. And then when his wife is talking about Frankenstein's dick with her girls, she would be like, oh, last night I hit nine. I must be getting better because, like, three days ago, I hit I hit six and I wanted to throw up. That's disgusting. <laughs> but... <laughs> disgusting. I I think it's it's funny. I think it tickles my funny bone. So yeah, uh, uh, what's the name of the book again? The book I've read, or the book I recommend, or the book that's similar to it. The book I read? Yes. Bringing Down the Duke. Bringing Down the Duke. Yes. Okay, so Bringing Down the Duke. Uh, what else would you like to say about Bringing Down the Duke? 
It's wonderful. Their sexual sexual tension build up, and we finally get to see that come to fruition, like we didn't in Jane Austen, which I already said. And oh gosh, it was just wonderful. Okay, so uh, is there any rating that you would like to give this book? Because um, we're we're doing a uh, star based rating based off of how you rate things on your Instagram, uh, Novel Kingdom. Uh, so how would you like to rate this book? I definitely gave it five out of five stars. It was perfect. Perfect build up, perfect pace, everything. Nice. Now, uh, five stars. Wow, that's the first five, star five stars we've ever had on the show. Um, it's probably not going to be the last time we have five stars. Uh, Keridin is a huge book nerd, and I'm pretty sure she loves every single book she reads, as long as it's in, it's in her wheelhouse. I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know. I'd say I'm pretty harsh. I try not to be, but I feel like my five stars are pretty few and far between these days. But four, four is still good. There are quite a few fours out there. It's not bad. Don't be ashamed. What was the last four you read? Oh, gosh. The Damned by Renee, please forgive me if I butcher her last name, Adier. Oh, that's the one you were reading this week. The one I was reading on the drive back yesterday. The one where you were talking to me about it and some of the stuff didn't really sound right. I mean, the pacing was just very off. I felt like... Nothing really happened until the last 100 pages of a 400-page novel. So it's like... That's not the way uh, to do it. What is it? Uh, the, the Star Wars Episode Eight. Oh, bless. <laughs> two bless hours, it. Two hours of nothing. <laughs> we'll forgive it. Uh, will we? I will. I won't. You probably won't. No. It's okay. All right. So anything else you want to add to the conversation before we shift off onto our next segment? Read Bringing Down the Duke. Read A Rogue of One's Own. It does not follow the same heroine, but it does follow one of her friends that is, like, a semi larger than minor character in Bringing Down the Duke, if that makes sense. Interesting. She's fairly prominent. Okay. All right. So I guess now it's time to go into games and stuff. Slap, 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 slap. Oh, she stopped. She's done. I was afraid she was going to eat. <laughs> Let her eat if she wants to. Chop, chop. Yeah, we heard slap, slap, slap just because our dog Luna decided to take a drink of water. Um, she She's in a rough spot. Bless she her had, heart. She had a very rough weekend. She went up to Georgia with us. She stayed with Karen's grandma and... My Is poor she? grandma, she's so well intentioned, intentioned, but she literally did everything I told her not to do. So she gave us back a goblin instead of a dog. Our poor baby. So, uh, today, this week's game is going to be Samurai Jack Battle Through Time, released on August 21st, 2020 for PS4, Switch, Xbox One, and PC. This game was developed by Soleil Limited and distributed by Adult Swim Games. Adult Swim? Yeah. Like Rick and Morty? Yes. Do they have Rick and Morty video games? Yes. But they're kind of like VR experiences, not really um, something that we could play. So. That would make me puke. Yes, it would. I have very, very, very bad motion sickness when it comes to the first person video game -age. And I, it, I think uh, they are mostly like explore Rick's lab, like touch stuff, throw shit around. and. That sounds boring. I want to go to the different planets, different universes. I don't think that's what that's going to happen. But um, there is one that Justin Roiland did make called Trover Saves the Universe. And that one is more or less like an, a, it's supposed to be a VR game, but I think you can actually play it without the VR headset. Mm. Um, and so it's first person. Yes and no. Vomit. No, because <laughs> basically, since it's VR, the way that they I think they made it is that you're sitting on your couch, everything plays out in front of you, so you can move Trover around. Oh. And you're not actually him. You just 
looking at him. Okay. Doesn't sound as bad. Yeah. But um, if you're a fan of Samurai Jack, this game that we're talking about is almost like what you wanted out of Rick and Morty. Uh, you start out by watching the intro to the Samurai Jack cartoon show, which I thought was fucking amazing. Um, and then immediately uh, you're thrown into gameplay. You're thrown into the past, but it's not Jack's past in ancient Japan. It's Jack's past of when he gets thrown into the future. So you get thrown into the beginning of the show and you're just playing out Jack's moments throughout his five season run. Um, and this game, it looks, it looks great. This game looks amazing. Um, it's cell shaded and they did it in a way that depending on the angle you're looking at the model or the angle that they move, you can always tell what part of his face you're looking at. Like his nose is always defined. If he's looking down, he'll have an outline around the underside and the side of his nose. And when he looks up, that outline will move so that you can see what exactly is his nose. And it, it just looks great. Um, the models are great. It's so fluid. It is gorgeous. It is detailed. The backgrounds look exactly like the cartoon details, only rendered in 3D. So this is a show you watched when you were a kid? Yes. Yeah, I used to love Samurai Jack. I think I, it came out when I was in fifth or sixth grade. And I, I just fell in love with it. I mean, it's samurai fighting robots. Oh, I didn't realize he was fighting robots. Yes, it's robots all the oh. time. Oh. Yeah. Except Where do they come from? Aku. What's that? The bad guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Explains it all. <laughs> so basically more a little bit more about the story. Um. Ancient evil appears out of nowhere. Uh, I think Jack's dad forges this magic blade to contain it. Mm -hmm. um, somehow he escapes the magic blade. He starts destroying the land. Jack inherits the blade. He goes fight Aku. Aku is this shape-shifting evil demon portal monster thing. And he sends Jack into the future where Aku has ruled the entire planet by then. So it's like super futuristic. Um, there's anthropomorphic humans and animals. Um, there's a bunch of crazy shit going on. And all the bad guys that Jack fights are robots. Whenever he has to fight a human or something with a conscience or human intelligence, he somehow always ends up befriending them oh. instead of killing them. <laughs> Until season five, but shit gets crazy in season five. I, I still haven't watched all of it. It's not really a good trait in a warrior. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it could I mean, go it both ways. Kid, it was a kid's show. Yeah. And it was done by Gendy Tartakovsky. He's the guy that created um, Dexter's Lab. He basically helped pioneer that entire cartoon cartoon movement in, in the late 90s, early 2000s in Cartoon Network, um, where they moved away from all the Hanna-Barbera products and started uh, producing their own content. Uh, but yeah, the, the game looks amazing. Now, I do have a couple of problems. Um, I was talking to you about this earlier. The animation, when not in gameplay, sucks. What does that mean? When it's in a cutscene, it's stiff. When the cutscenes are the parts that are like a movie, right? Yeah, well, I don't know much about video games. Well, you're not <laughs> controlling anything and they're just like talking it out. Or, okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so so the cutscenes, they're stiff. There's this one scene towards the end where Jack is about to enter Aku's tower and all his friends are there to help him. And they're like talking and moving, but they're they're just so stiff. They're like not animated completely. When when you're in the gameplay, everything like has this flow and this movement and this amazing choreography. It's, these animations are are not good. Um, there is one particular set of moments that I hated that completely just took me out of the game. And there were when you were fighting a giant boss, right? You beat the boss. There's a little bit of health. You hit the last attack. It just stops completely. Like it takes you entirely out of the fight. What? And it just throws you into a cutscene. What? Yeah. Is that normal? Usually there's a transition. Okay. But this is just like it stops and it throws you in. Mm -hmm. And you see, like, the robot falls, and I don't know where, just, like, you see Jack, like, 
do like some sort of weird jerk, and apparently that's the killing blow. What? And then, or or you just see it fall, and Jack is like running towards it, and then you see Jack just walking away. So you don't make the killing blow you, as you do in the game, but they give you like a cutscene of how it should have. Which a lot of games do that, and when it's done right, it's great. But when mm-hmm. it's not, mm-hmm. it's not. And uh, the other thing that that kind of took me out was the sound design. Um, the sound design uh, sounded like discount bargain bin type music for most of the stages. Um, some of the cutscenes did have good music, and uh, the thing that really, really took me out was the result screen music so result screen is the screen that pops up Mm -hmm. it gives you your stats you know how long it took you to beat the stage how many enemies you killed how many times you got hit if you used items crap like that and uh it just goes like let's say the super serious music jack figured something out um from the story or he's having like this emotional conflict within himself and as soon as he resolves himself result screen and the fucking music is just so bad. Instead of just keeping like the music they were using for this, for the cutscene, just to keep it rolling, they just throw you discount hip hop shit. Oh, and it's bad discount hip hop shit. Now there are some cool things though. There's these specific stages where there's cl- cars flying by, and sometimes if a car f- flies by, you would hear like the opening intro song to the show. So I, I thought that part was really cool because I heard it in that cutscene when you get to that stage. And then you, you're you playing through it. You're fighting a bunch of robots. And then out of nowhere, a car flies by with the song. You're like, holy shit, is the intro to Samurai Jack. Um, and that, that was really cool. And the uh, good thing that I loved about this is that most of the voice actors are back. Obviously, John DiMaggio, he played Bender. He played uh, Jig the Dog. He played Foo Dog in American Dragon. Uh, he's super famous voice actor. You would recognize him if you heard him. Uh, Tara Strong, I think she is the voice of Harley Quinn in the cartoon show. And she also voiced a couple of the Powerpuff Girls, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. And, uh, of course, uh, Phil Lamar. He is amazing in everything he does. He was John Stewart in Justice League. He is, um, obviously, Samurai Jack. And uh, he was Hermes in Futurama. He's the Jamaican dude in Futurama. It's been too long since I've watched Futurama. <laughs> now, the the one that is completely different, and I think that he is pretty on point, is Greg Baldwin in the role of Aku. Um, Aku's original voice actor, Mako, uh, died in 2006. Um, so they replaced him. This was one of the largest reasons why the show took so long to come back to finish Jack's story was because Mako was no longer around, and they wanted to find somebody that would fit the role perfect. Is Baldwin a famous voice actor as uh, well? I'm not sure. I think he has some good credits under his name, but... Maybe not as well-known as the others. Yeah, but um, Aku, his Aku is... It's pretty fucking good. Um, the gameplay. This is the thing that drew me in. It just hooked me. Uh, this game is about 10 hours long. When I bought it, I sat down, and I didn't get up to like 9 hours later. Uh, this game was just plain stupid from fun from start to finish. Um, it's a hack and slash game, uh, kind of like Devil May Cry, where you have different weapons, you have different abilities, you got skill trees that you can buy and equip uh, different upgrades and attack patterns and all that from. And honestly, this game feels like a PS2 game in a good way. This game feels like a game from the PlayStation 2 era that never came out, that just got released in PlayStation 4 and Switch. And uh, it's, it's just amazing. It's just so good. Like being able to fight enemies with your sword. The sword's not working because they have different defense stats. You just switch to your fists and you're just punching and kicking the shit out of these robots. And it's so cool. Now, apart from the punching and kicking, you got spears, you got clubs, you got uh, guns, bows, all that stuff. And they, they help break up the combat. You know, if you have uh, an enemy that's giving you problems, just back off. Shoot them with an arrow. Shoot them with your gun. And uh, honestly, if this game would have come out when I was 10 or 11, I would have lost my shit. <laughs> I lost my shit playing this game now. Back then, I would have exploded. 
This game is amazing. To me, this game is a solid 4.5. Oh, we're bringing out the 0.5. I'm bringing out the 0.5. This is 4.5 stars. Uh, it's perfect to me. It's amazing in every way. I love that after you finish the game, you get extra missions. You get extra modes that are for you to complete. You get some different outfits for Jack. And it's 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 fun. It's great. It's 40 bucks. Just buy it. Better yet, wait till it's out on 20 bucks. It's still worth it on 20 bucks. But I paid 40 I don't regret paying 40 The only thing I regret is that I didn't buy it in time from... Uh, limited run game so I could get a uh, physical copy of the game, but it, it's amazing. It's worth every penny. And uh, yeah, that that's about it. You got any questions for me about the game? I think I covered all of them. Okay. So let's go into our favorite segment. Are you ready? I'm ready. You want to introduce it? I think so. Go ahead. Give me the garbage. Give me the garbage. This week's restaurant is Via Thai Cafe on Sand Lake Road in Orlando. Now, let us tell you a little bit about how we found this restaurant, um, what type of restaurant it is. Uh, so, we used to like going to Super Saiyan. We loved going to Super Saiyan, but things changed very quickly when... It got famous. Exactly. Yeah. They... Because Dragon Ball nerds are obsessive we we are (laughs) we are a problem yes you are you are we are a big problem shame so yeah so basically one day we went to super saiyan and the line was astronomical and we said fuck this let's find somewhere else to go and uh did a quick google search found out this place was nearby it was like 15 minutes from where we lived said fuck it let's go let's try it out let's try a different fob place and we got there you know people were super friendly they took us to our table Service was amazing, and the type of restaurant that this is is a Vietnamese Thai fusion place. Um, and their food shows. It really does. It's, it's so fucking amazing. It like takes the perfect pieces out of each one, and just combines it. Now, the service here is great. It's impeccable. They always recognize us. They always welcome us. They always know our order. In fact, we went last night. We <laughs> sat down, and she said, okay, can I take your order? And I said, two large faux thai. And she said, with a fried egg. I said, yep. And egg rolls. And egg rolls. She knew. And she started laughing. We laughed. She walked away. She got us our order. We were happy. And, then, you know, with the whole COVID thing, they are, they're super clean right now. You know, they wear their gloves. They wear their masks. They disinfect the tables. They have a table open in between each and every people sitting there and uh yeah it's it's a really really great place now we do have this little bit of a a story with this place a little bit (laughs) oh man you want to tell it i can tell part of it but i don't think i'll tell it with as much fire as you (laughs) I'm a very non-confrontational person, so I was just going to ignore what was going on. Um, but unfortunately, one night that we went to Viet Thai, we were enjoying our lovely bowls of pho. And this was this was right after the lockdown was lifted, right? Well, I think this is just when um, just when restaurants were reopening for dine-in. So yeah. I think there was still a curfew and things like that. Right. Things are definitely not right. normal yet by any means. But I mean, we're um, still not right now, but yeah. still, this was like beginning. You'd think people would behave. You would think. So this lovely family enters the establishment and is seated just behind us. I can't see them. Unfortunately, Chris had full view. <laughs> but everyone, probably even the patrons next door in the smoke shop, could hear these people, and how vulgar they were being. I mean, like, people are eating their dinner. We don't want to hear about DCF being brought into someone you know's home and there being feces all over the house. Like, come on. 
I'm slurping on my noodles. I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> now, these people, the best way to describe them were high-class white trash. Because you, <laughs> you could tell that they had money, but they had no fucking manners. No, they had none. no tact. They, had they were no, yelling at our favorite waiter. They have no sense of these people don't want to be here working. These people want to go home, but they have to work. They were being fucking horrible. I, I just wanted to kick their shit in. I mean, I know, I don't know which one of them did it, but I know I heard someone literally hold up their empty glass and shake the ice at the waiter at one point. I think that was the, the man in the group. And like the, the lady said the feces part. and She didn't even say feces. We're being proper. Everybody in the fucking restaurant, is, except I, for the oh. wait staff, just turned around and looked at them like, are you fucking serious? And you're they're just oblivious. You're screaming about this shit in this restaurant while everybody's eating and you fucking idiots are unaware of yourselves that you're... Fuck you! And another thing that you need to know is that this is a pretty small establishment. I would not say that it's not popular, but it's never busy. Yeah, it last, is never busy. Yeah, it's, last it's, night is like basically the only time we've gone in and almost all the tables were full. Yes. So they, they have their loyal customers. They have like this amazing service. Like not too long ago we went and this guy just kept ordering stuff and ordering stuff and they kept bringing him out the food, you know. And the waiter brought something out and he says, oh, no, we're not going to keep, we're not going to have that one. You can add it to our check, but we're not going to eat it. And the waiter's like, okay, that's fine. And he just walked away with the place. said, if you want it, we'll just box it out for you so you can take it. So the, the wait staff is amazing. Like, these people were being fucking obnoxious. They were horrible. They were snapping at the waiter. And he's just as oh, happy as can be. <laughs> As amazing as he always is, you know, he's, you know, helping them out, giving them recommendations and all that. And this is something that I've seen at this restaurant where the wait staff is always like this. They're always happy to see you there. They're always happy for you to go. Even during these times, they'll they'll take care of you. This does not mean that you guys can go to the restaurant and be complete fucking dickheads. Like these people. Be courteous. Be it at Viet Thai, be it at Super Saiyan, be it wherever. Super. The, be it whatever the fuck you want to go eat. Be nice. Be courteous. These people don't want to be there. You shouldn't be there. The reason we go is because they need our support. Exactly. Small and business love. Lo and we love their food. Also, now let's talk about the food. Also, chain restaurants are going to get their fair shit here. They really are. <laughs> I can't wait to tear into some bad chain restaurant <laughs> shit. Um, but yeah, let's go into their food. Let, let's start with... Uh, let's not start with the first item. Let's start with something else that we ordered a couple of times. Uh, the, the chicken uh, yakitori. Oh, you looked up the actual name of it. This I remembered it last tonight <laughs> when we were driving over there. It's like a chicken skewer. It, something it, like that. It's literally just a grilled chicken skewer, but they give it... It's it's seasoned, I think, in, in uh, a little bit of curry, and I can't remember what the other thing is. I know it's a yellow powder like curry, but it's not curdy. It's not cumin. I, I can... He hates cumin. I can picture exactly what it is. He'd be able to is. tell you if that's what it is. I can picture exactly what it is because I saw a post on Facebook of a cat being covered in it because... What? He had fleas. <laughs> then we need to put it on Luna. <laughs> she has a cough. Poor Luna. <laughs> so this cat was being covered in that crap because he had fleas. And after they showered him, they took up the whole thing. It stained his hair. He was all white. He looked like a little Pikachu. Oh, I need to see it. If I find it, I'll show it okay. to you. But anyways, this this uh, yakitori is amazing. They give it to you on a plate. They give you like four skewers. And peanut sauce. And it, it, it's it's a lot of meat that they put on those skewers. Usually when you ask for skewers, they just give you like a little bit. No, and, It's a lot. And, and they give you a little bowl of peanut sauce for you to dip into. And it is. It's amazing. It's got a nice char to it from when they cook it on the grill. And uh, it, it's, it's juicy. It's creamy. It's chickeny it's all the good stuff i would hope that it's chickeny i mean if it was froggy could you even tell could you even tell have i had frog before i know i've had gator before 
But I don't think I've had Prague before. Exactly. To know. Exactly. But yeah, uh, the, the Toriyaki, Yakitori. Toriyaki. Why do I keep saying Toriyaki? The Yakitori. Is Teriyaki. <laughs> <laughs> yakitori is great. Um, there's also the dumplings. The dumplings are. They're not bad. They're not bad. We just don't like them boiled or steamed. We like them pan fried. Yes. He accidentally ordered them steamed one night and I just couldn't do it. It's just a texture thing. It is nothing to do with the taste. It is all texture. The flavor is great. And uh, the same stuffing that they use in dumplings is what they use for the egg rolls, which is is what we want to talk about. Our one true love. Our first item. The egg rolls. And these aren't egg rolls. In the uh, traditional sense that you would picture when you think of an egg roll. Yeah. So instead of being in that egg roll wrapping paper and deep fried, it's a lumpia type wrapping paper. So it's super flaky, super thin, super compact, yes. super tight, stuffed with this amazing, delicious pork feel- feeling. There is no air like there is no. in egg rolls. Like you bite into an egg roll, you get a lot of cabbage, very little pork, and a lot of air. This, you bite, you get just Everything. Pork. <laughs> it, it, it's like if they took the egg roll and reversed it, and they just give you a little bit of cabbage and a lot of pork. Yes. Yes. And they give you a, a, a fish chili sauce. I don't know what that sauce is. The first time I saw it, I thought it was duck sauce, but it is definitely it's not. not duck sauce, but I, I did try the sauce on its own last night with just the noodles from the pho. He regretted it. Because <laughs> it, it's very fishy. So uh, You can't really taste the fishiness when you're just eating it with the yeah, but rolls, or at least I can. It, it tastes amazing with the egg rolls, but when you eat it on its own, especially with something as bland as rice noodles that just pick up the flavor of whatever's in it, it, it's tough. <laughs> I think I put a bit too much to it. <laughs> He's like, nope, don't like it. <laughs> yeah, no, the, these egg rolls are amazing. I wish I could eat a thousand of them. They're so crispy. Oh, and you just, you have to eat it piping hot. It's just, it's so worth it. Burn your tongue just a little bit. It's okay. It is worth it. <laughs> because even if you burn your tongue, you're still going to burn your tongue on the pho. Oh, yeah, you are. It was super hot last night. And uh, the way that we have the pho is we have their pho thai, which is basically just rice noodles, broth, onions, scallions, uh, cilantro, cilantro, and uh, steak, steak, rare thin steak. Oh. And I'm sure you people have had uh, pho before, but you know they throw the the steak raw into the broth, and broth is so hot that it cooks it. Uh, we asked for an egg in it too. Fried egg. Yeah, we like our eggs sunny side up yes. so that we can actually have a little bubble of egg yolk to bite into. It's magical. I don't think that the problem is that they overcooked the egg. I think we just need to specify when no. we say no. No. You think the broth cooks it the rest of the way. The I think broth. you think they leave it sunny side up and then they put it in the broth and the broth mine, kills it. Mine wasn't cooked all the way yesterday. The center the of yolk, mine was still runny. The, the yolk very of center. Mine was completely cooked and it did not look like it had gotten cooked on a stovetop. That's a good point. It's not their fault. Maybe we should ask for it on a plate on the side. <laughs> Let the broth cool a little bit because we never eat the egg first. Next time we'll just say, you know what? Just bring me two raw eggs. <laughs> we'll, we'll take care of it here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but, yeah, no, th- this thing is amazing. Super fresh noodles, super fresh beef, super fresh veggies. And they give you a little plate on the side with... Uh, Bean sprouts? Yeah. How- Mint? jalapenos and uh lime my favorite part he rolls his eyes at me i hate lime we were made for each other because we so passionately hate and love the opposite things (laughs) oh so you love those people that were being rude you know what i mean like like the like the chips ahoy you can have all of it i hate it all for you i'll never eat your snacks Uh, But yeah, no, that lime, it is perfection. Sometimes they will give us two wedges of lime a piece. I take all four lime wedges and I squeeze them with passion into my bubble. It's so good. So good. Yeah, it's it's, it's very good. Uh, This is our Friday night tradition. This week we weren't here for Friday night. So we went Sunday. We literally cannot go a week without it at this point. There There was one week a couple weeks ago where we ate it twice in one week. We went on a Tuesday and a Friday. 
You want to know what I have? I wanted to have for dinner today. You well, wanted pho? Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> like, granted, this place is like thirty minutes away from here. It is. We mm. live. Yeah. If we drive the thirty minutes away, just toll to, roads. Just toll to roads. Go have this pho. It's so worth it. It's it's our favorite place. It's probably gonna stay our favorite place. And uh, we can't recommend it enough. Now, Viet Thai Cafe on Sand Lake Road gets a certified garbage. Garbage means delicious, gourmet, good for your soul. So fucking good. There is no other way to describe this food. It is amazing. God, I love it. It's amazing. It is. I'm running out of adjectives. It's just, it's just the best. Yeah, now, my, my favorite bite. You already know what my favorite bite is. His perfect bite. The perfect bite for me. He looks ridiculous taking it. <laughs> <laughs> I look like fucking Pac-Man munching on that spoon. Yes. So you take the little spoon that you use to drink the broth with. You throw your noodles in and you put a little bit of broth. You put a piece of steak, a piece of green onion, a piece of onion, <laughs> the egg yolk. Hopefully the runny egg yolk, but doesn't matter even if it's fully cooked. <laughs> and you just squirt that shit with sriracha. Mm-hmm. You open your mouth as big as it can go. It's probably not gonna work. And you eat it all in one bite. <laughs> and it's so good. I don't know how he does it. It is amazing. Just like that, that whole mix of fat and noodle and broth and fresh onions and and spice and spicy sriracha sauce and creamy egg yolk there's there's very little few things in this life that compare to the feeling of taking that perfect <laughs> bite now the perfect bite for me in that place is that but the concept of the perfect bite is you take a bite out of everything that the chef intended for you to eat in that plate at the same time so if you have a burger you eat around the entire edges the middle is going to be the perfect bite. That's what's going to have your ketchup, your mayonnaise, your bacon, your onions, your tomato, your lettuce, your pickles, your whatever the hell else is in that burger. Always cheese. Always cheese. That's going to be the perfect bite. And uh, Carradine learned that. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to take a much smaller version of his perfect bite. Not me. <laughs> got a t-rex mouth over there <laughs> yeah it's fucking dinosaur mouth <laughs> all right so that's it for this episode um let's just go into a couple of other things some little bit of uh housekeeping that we wanted to do so basically uh this is a novel console this is karen and i just having fun doing a little bit of a podcast um you know we want to talk about our favorite books games and food of the week um like I said, we're going to do a little bit of a rating, five, five out of uh, one out of possible five stars amount type. Uh, for books and games. Uh, reviews for books and games. And then for food, we're going to do either garbage, bad, garbage, delicious, good for your soul, gourmet, amazingness. Gimme to garbage. And uh, yeah, that's it. So a little bit about us. I used to be part of a video game podcast in Puerto Rico, you know, it was always a good fun. It was always a good time. It was always great and fun. And, uh, yeah, uh, I moved here to Florida. I've been wanting to do a podcast for a while now. I decided to buy a couple of, of microphones. I wanted to do a podcast with friends. It fell through and I said, Hey, Karen's my best friend. Why don't I just start a podcast with her? And I told her, let's start a podcast. She's like, Oh, but what are we going to talk about? I said, well, you like... You make me sound like Morty. <laughs> That's what I was going for. <laughs> I like Rick more. No. <laughs> Carradine, you want to start a, a, a podcast with me, Carradine? That's you being Rick, not me. Oh. I want to be Rick. You're Morty. You're more of a Morty. Whatever. Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, we. <laughs> she's my best friend. Why not start it with her? She said, yeah. And uh, here we are. About a microphones. We're sitting down in our living room table listening to assholes go by really loud and uh looking at luna scratching herself they have tiny dicks luna. the people driving by okay not luna not luna <laughs> yeah anything you want to say about yourself Karen? 
Um, well, I moved to Orlando um, because I wanted to work for Disney, and I did that for about a year, and then I left Disney, and I have since started my own bookstagram account. I think Chris mentioned it earlier. It's at Novel Kingdom, like I said, on Instagram. I read a lot of books. I have a book problem. I probably receive about 10 books a week in the mail. It's a big problem. It's taking over our apartment, but it's We're okay. We're swimming in books. Because I can talk about all of them here. We're <laughs> swimming in books. Now, I, I would like for you guys to help us out with those books. Um, the way that we've been thinking about having you guys help us out with those books and maybe help me out with some of the video game problem that I have is uh, we're thinking about eventually starting a Patreon. We would make this a extensively cheap Patreon. We're going to have a couple of rewards. Um, thinking about probably doing $2 a month. And that's basically just to cover expenses for us to send out all these damn books that Carradine has to you beautiful people. That way you guys can enjoy the books that we enjoy, the video games that I enjoy. And, uh, you know, we'll shout you out in the podcast. If you want to write us an email, you can do it at a novel console at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter at a novel console at G. Not. Not Gmail on Twitter. <laughs> at a novel console on Twitter and at a novel console on Instagram. And uh, our logo was made by. Metamorphica. She is a friend of the show and she has her own shop on Instagram where you can go and find more of her art, more of her earrings and her paintings and everything else that she does. And uh, how yeah. do you spell that? So it's Metamorph, M E T A M O R P H I K E I. I never would have guessed that. So Metamorphica. There we go. Yeah, so go follow her, go follow us, a novel console, a novel console at gmail.com for emails. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Anything else you want to say, uh, Karen? Thank you for sitting through our bullshit. We appreciate it. Hey, it was fun. If you buy that squirrel dildo, let us know. We'd love to see some reviews. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, gonna, we're probably going to post that squirrel dildo and uh, <laughs> the squirrel hand puppet on our socials for you guys to look at no. and enjoy. So, yeah, so I hope you guys have a wonderful whatever of whenever you're hearing, hearing this. And uh, bye. I'll, we'll see you next week. See you next week.